Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and yes, I do have a good one here today. The Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra in the house. I've been using it, putting it through its paces, intensive testing, putting it up against things like the MacBook Pro or the Dell XPS 16. And a lot of interesting features here. It's got the Meteor Lake processor. We know that. We know it has a discrete GPU. We'll get into that as well. It's from NVIDIA. We know that there's going to be some more efficiency, hopefully, with this Meteor Lake processor. It's got a beautiful 2.8K dynamic AMOLED 2X display that now has touch support. It didn't have that last year, we now have it. But the big question is, does the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra the MacBook Pro? We're gonna find out today. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra, brand new for 2024, coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Samsung. I'm not being sponsored by Samsung. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Samsung is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. This is not a review unit from Samsung. Now, let's talk pricing here. There are two versions of this, one for $23.99.99 and one for $29.99.99, a $600 difference. I had to go with the $23.99 version with the Intel Core Ultra 7, 16 gigabytes of RAM, RTX 4050 graphics, because I couldn't get the one that is listed below that. It just wasn't available at the time. It may be available now. That one comes with 32 gigabytes of RAM, a Core Ultra 9 processor, and the RTX 40. 70. Now, for those interested, I will leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. Now, I'm not crazy about the price. Of course, $2,400 and $3,000 is quite a bit to pay, but Samsung does have a pretty good trade-in program where they're offering up to $700 of instant trade-in credit for you use PC, mobile phone, or tablet. So for those interested, my affiliate links will be in the description below. Remember, I get a small commission if you choose to go through them. Certainly helps out the channel. And when you're spending $3,000 plus, every little penny helps. It certainly helps out the channel if you go through my links. Anyway, Links will be in the description below. And one more thing about the price, for those that are really upset about it, well, look at a similarly equipped MacBook Pro with the M3 Pro. That comes in at $24.99. That's $100 more than the unit I have here from Samsung. So we're going to get into it more now, but I just wanted to point that out. And don't worry, I have reviews of the Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360 and the Galaxy Book 4 Pro 14, that full review, coming very soon. So everything is coming in hot and heavy, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel. You know the drill, folks. Let's get this out of the box. Okay, looks like we have a uh, pretty nice packaging once again. It's a super fast charger once again, and this one is a beefier one. It's a little bit more heft to it than the other one we saw, so we'll get a, a measurement of the weight and all that when we uh, get the scale out. And here is, of course, the unit itself. Got a little bit of heft. You can definitely feel the difference between that and the 360 that we just looked at. And then, of course, this is the power cord, USB Type-C, and of course some documentation we saw on the other two we looked at, so no need to go into that again. So all told, pretty nice packaging. And here it is uh, in the flesh, of course, and this is the Moonstone Gray. And again, it seems a little lighter than the 14 inch, more in line what we saw on the 360 and uh, really nice solid build quality here and uh, very thin, but not so light. We're gonna get a measurement of the weight in a moment. Let's of course do the one finger test here as we always do. And you can certainly open it up with one finger there. Now with just the unit alone, you're looking at 1.835 kilograms, and that would be four pounds, 0 0.7 ounces. So that is for just the unit alone. And let's put it back onto kilograms here. And total travel weight with the power cord and this pretty heavy power charger, 2.169 kilograms, and that would be four pounds, 12.5 ounces. And considering this packs a discrete GPU under the hood, a little bit more power than what we normally get, that's not too bad for a 16-inch laptop to take with you on the go. 
Now, when you compare it to the Apple MacBook Pro 16-inch with the M3 Pro, that's a 12-core CPU and 18-core GPU, that weighs in at 2.14 kilograms or 4.7 pounds versus the 1.835 kilograms or 4.05 pounds for the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra. Now, as far as thickness is concerned, the MacBook Pro is 16.8 millimeters thick, whereas the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra is 16.5 millimeters thick just a smidge less than that, so not a big deal in that regard. And for those wondering, here's how it stacks up in terms of thickness versus the 360 version, as well as the Galaxy Book 4 Pro 14 inch that we took a look at already. Now, when it comes to ports, on the left side is an HDMI 2.1 port and two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function, supporting data, charge, and display out. Now moving over to the right side is a micro SD card reader, a USB type A port, and a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. I would say all in all, a good port selection. One nitpick here, I'd like to see those two USB type C Thunderbolt 4 ports split up one on each side. And I would prefer a full size SD card reader as a content creator, that to me is essential. I don't care for the micro SD card reader. So that's just my thoughts on that. I'm curious to know what you think about it. Let me know know in the comment section below. Now, Samsung makes it pretty easy to get inside this laptop. You will have to remove the four feet. Don't worry, they're easily replaceable back onto there. You can just pop them off and put them back on without any problem. Then remove the four Phillips head screws, pop off the bottom plate with a guitar pick, spudger, or pry tool, and you're in. Just take your time, work around the edges. Now, once inside, you'll notice the two fans for cooling and what appears to be vapor chamber cooling. At least that's what it appears to me. We'll talk about the thermal performance later on in this review. You also notice that 76 watt hour battery will get into the battery life later on as well. Now, like most laptops here in 2024, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. Now, my unit has 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's LPDDR5X RAM running in dual channel mode. And because it's soldered in, it's the faster RAM, 74, 67 megahertz is what it's running at. So that is a silver lining to the fact that it is soldered in. But as a content creator, as somebody who does this for a living, I do prefer RAM that is user upgradable. That's just the way I view it. And that's not going to change anytime soon. Now, what's interesting is if you compare the internals between the Ultra and the Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360, it looks like this one has a vapor chamber cooling, as I mentioned, whereas the Book 4 Pro 360 does not. That's an interesting choice there, of course. And then this one has an extra M.2 SSD slot for storage expansion, whereas the 360 does not. So there's some differences internally between these two. Now, the one terabyte SSD in my unit here is a Western Digital black one, and it's actually pretty good. As far as the reads and writes, I would say in line with other Meteor Lake laptops I've looked at already here in 2024, certainly fast enough for what you need this laptop to do. Now, when it comes to wireless, this has Wi-Fi 6E and a Bluetooth 5.3 combo card that is unfortunately soldered into the motherboard, meaning you cannot upgrade it as the user. And why am I saying it's unfortunate? Well, it's not Wi-Fi 7, which is the modern standard or the future looking standard. And having Wi-Fi 6E is fine for now, but it's not future proof. And other OEMs have moved to Wi-Fi 7. Not sure why Samsung stuck with Wi-Fi 6E on this. Again, and not upgradable by the user. That's a bit disappointing. Now, to me, the star of the show has got to be the 16-inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display with a variable refresh rate up to 120 hertz, which is now touch-enabled. This is a change year over year and a welcome change at that. Now, with a dynamic AMOLED 2X display, what does it mean? Well, you get all the hallmarks of an AMOLED display that goes without saying. The deep blacks, the super vibrant colors, the really high contrast, excellent coverage of the color gamut, really color accurate. So if you're a content creator that does Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing, and DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro, you're going to like this display. It's going to be really good for those type of activities. Now, one difference between a mini LED as you get on a MacBook Pro and an OLED or an AMOLED display as we have here is that an AMOLED display cannot get as bright as a mini LED. So as far as the brightness, they claim 400 nits. I actually measured a bit above that, 405 nits, but you will get a brighter display on the MacBook Pro. Just keep that in mind. 
Now it is an HDR display watching high dynamic range content in Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, and the like is simply superb on this panel. Now, I personally like having a touch display, and that allows you to do pinch to zoom and manipulate photos and say Lightroom or Photoshop. And I like that accuracy in that. And it's also convenient to navigate the OS with your finger. You can't do any of that on a MacBook Pro. And I think that's a leg up here for this Samsung over the Apple. So this is the camera on the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra here for 2024. 2 megapixel 1080p camera, not an IR. You'll have to use the fingerprint scanner if you want to log in with Windows Hello or passcode, password, but no IR. Now, as far as this, the 1080p camera, what do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality? This is a Meteor Lake laptop, so you do get the NPU here that helps with the AI or studio effects. And what do we have here? We have the auto framing. So if I go out of frame here it should follow me yes it does okay the mpu is at work here i guess uh that's the auto framing you have the eye contact and then you have the background blur this is the standard blur and then of course this is the portrait blur i think it does a reasonably good job here but i'm curious to know what you think let me know in the comment section below and here is the camera versus the macbook pro's camera as well as the dell xps 16's camera so this is the camera on the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra here for 2024. So this is the camera on the MacBook Pro 14. This is the one with the M3 Max here, late 2023. Oh. So this is the camera on the brand new Dell XPS 16 here for 2024. 1080p IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. Now when it comes to performance, it's not going to be as good as the MacBook Pro 16 with the M3 Pro. That's a 12-core CPU, 18-core GPU, 26% less single-core performance, 18% less multi-core performance. But where we are seeing an increase is in better GPU performance, 56% better in that OpenCL score on the Geekbench 6.2 test. So pretty interesting in that regard. And it's more of the same with the Cinebench 2024, better single core and multi-core performance. But where we're seeing an improvement is in the GPU, the 7807 versus the 6003. That's the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4050 outperforming that 18 core GPU on the Apple Silicon. So very interesting result there once again. And it didn't do quite as well as the Dell XPS 16 that I reviewed. Now, of course, that one has the same CPU, the Core Ultra 7 155H, but a more powerful GPU, the RTX 4070. I have the RTX 4050 on this one. And we're seeing pretty much across the board here less performance, although not much in the CPU side of things. But the GPU, you are seeing a difference between the RTX 4070 and the RTX 4050. And by the way, you can also get this in an RTX 4070 along with the Core Ultra 9 processor from Intel. So very interesting results when we go head to head with these 16 inch laptops here for 2024. And more of the same with the Cinebench 2024, when I compared it to the Dell XPS 16, better single core, better multi-core, better GPU. That's been the theme here so far. And when we put it head to head to last year's version, we're seeing less single core performance, which is not a surprise with the Meteor Lake. That's been the theme here in 2024, less single core year over year, but a little bit less also multi-core when you compare it year over year. But where we are seeing a little bit of an increase is in the GPU performance, about a 7.8% increase, even though they're running the same GeForce RTX 4050 GPU. Pretty interesting result here. And when you look at Cinebench R23 year over year, we're looking at less single core performance and we're looking at an increase in multi-core performance, a slight increase at 10.6%. So nothing to write home about, although it's the first increase we're seeing year over year between these two. So very interesting when it comes to sheer raw performance here. You're going to look better on the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra from last year than it would be from the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra this year. But where we are seeing a year-over-year -year increase is in the Time Spy score, almost 10% increase. And we're also seeing about 11% increase in the Fire Strike score. So a little bit of an improvement with that RTX 4050 year-over-year.
And here's how it shapes up as far as the others in this category. Not great single core performance, especially the other Meteor Lake laptops we looked at. But we are seeing a pretty good multi-core score, Cinebench 2024, when compared to others in the 16-inch category here. So pretty interesting result nonetheless. And I think you know this is not a gaming laptop per se. There are better dedicated gaming laptops out there. I have a few of them we're going to review coming soon, so make sure you are subscribed. But as far as what the RTX 4050 is capable here, certainly very capable. If you lower some of the settings, if you tweak the settings, you can get some playable frame rates on some of the more popular titles as indicated here. Now, when I ran the Time Spy stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load, it got a score of 92.4%, meaning it didn't pass, and meaning it detected a little bit of thermal throttling. Not much. Remember, 97% is the passing score, but it did detect some thermal throttling under load. And as far as the surface temperatures are concerned, I think they did a good job keeping it relatively cool. Above the keyboard, below the display, where the heat dissipates, it can get around 39 degrees Celsius, which is not bad at all. And on the underside, where the heat dissipates over there, reaching as high as 44, maybe 45 degrees Celsius. But where you place it on your lap, not very hot. So they do a good job in terms of cooling, and I think it has to do with that vapor chamber cooling that we saw in the internals. Now, as far as fan noise, it is something you will have to contend with on this laptop under heavy load when gaming and doing heavy intensive tasks, reaching as high as 52, maybe 53 decibels. But when you're in the optimized mode, when you're doing everyday tasks, was not much of an issue. Now, where we are seeing a major improvement is in the battery life. It has the same 76 watt hour battery as last year. I ran this with 120 hertz enabled, so expect better battery life, even better with 60 hertz or dynamic. But of course, year over year, we're seeing a big improvement in the PC Mark 10 modern office test, the PC Mark 10 video playback. So the overall takeaway is major improvement, which is not a surprise because we've been seeing excellent battery life out of the Meteor Lake Live. Laptops. It's a more efficient chipset where it may not be a better performer. It's definitely more efficient than last year. That's for sure. Okay, let's talk about the keyboard, and I'm not the biggest fan of this keyboard. I think I've let you know about that in the past. This is a shallow keyboard, and that's a carryover from last year. Although it's surprisingly good tactility and good feedback, despite having the shallow key travel, it was pleasant to type on for long periods of time, emails, documents, and the like. It was okay. Now, it does have a numeric keypad, so those number crunches will be happy, although the layout isn't your traditional layout, so I think some accountants and some number crunchers are not going to be happy and another consequence of having the numpad is the touchpad is moved off center that of course takes a little bit of getting used to although about an hour or two i didn't think it was an issue after that you get used to it you get acclimated now one thing you will notice of course is the touchpad itself is not a haptic touchpad and at this price point i think that's a major disappointment we've seen it on apple with their macbook pro some of the best touchpads in the business leading the way we saw on the hp specter x360 that's a haptic touchpad. They did a good job on that 16-inch as well as the 14-inch. We saw it on the Dell XPS 16. Again, this price point of over $3,000 on one of the models here. So you definitely are not going to be happy with the fact that this is not a haptic touchpad. Now, having said that, with a regular glass trackpad here, it worked well. Scrolling and doing all the gestures, everything seemed to be responsive enough. But again, at this price point, I would prefer a haptic touchpad. Now, as far as the audio, these are AKG tuned speakers. They're quad speakers, and they're okay. I think they sound pretty loud, good mids, good bass, although not quite as good as the MacBook Pro, which I think is the best in business. So I think you'll be overall okay with this. And of course, it does have a headphone jack. So if you want to connect to wired headphones, you certainly can do so. If you want to connect to Bluetooth headphones, you have that option. So there are some good things there. But I think the overall sound is going to be better, more rich, more fuller on the MacBook Pro. Now to give it a listen, let's compare it to the MacBook Pro. Now I have the 14 inch here. I don't have the 16 with me here, but this does have six speakers versus the quad speakers, AKG tuned speakers on the Samsung. And of course they're Dolby Atmos. Now let's give them a listen. <laughs> Thank you. 
So to wrap things up, does the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra f the MacBook Pro? And the answer is, for the most part, no, it doesn't. I think the MacBook Pro beats it in CPU performance, beats it in battery life, although the Samsung does have some massive battery improvements here for 2024, thanks to the Meteor Lake laptop. The MacBook Pro has better sound, has a better touchpad, and a better overall build, I think, slightly better build, although it's pretty premium here on the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra. Where we are seeing improvements are year over year is in battery life with the Galaxy Book 4 Ultra over the Galaxy Book 3 Ultra from last year. We're seeing a little bit better GPU performance year over year, so that's an improvement. But we are seeing less CPU performance year over year, and that's a little concerning, especially with this new Meteor Lake laptop here for 2024. So my overall takeaway is, yes, it's a good laptop. There are a lot of good things about it, but there are some missed opportunities here. For instance, they could have put a haptic touchpad here, especially at this high price point. They didn't do that. They could have put Wi-Fi 7. They didn't do that. They went with Wi-Fi 6E. It's got noticeable fan noise under load. It's got no IR camera, but neither does the MacBook Pro, in all fairness. But other Windows laptops running Meteor Lake certainly have IR cameras, although the camera here was very good. And there was some screen wobble. That was an issue last year, and I think it still has some screen wobble. Not quite as bad as last year, but it's still noticeable nonetheless. And it's very expensive. You have to pay a $600 premium to go to the Core Ultra 9 with the 32 gigabytes of RAM and the RTX 4070. So that is disappointing as well. Not too many options there. So I think overall, the MacBook Pro is a better device. And although this is a very good laptop, I think there are just too many missed opportunities to make Make it a great laptop. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. And don't forget to check out my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.